Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here we have a quick guide on Energy Blade Stormbrand Inquisitor in Path of Exile. The Energy Blade Stormbrand Inquisitor is a really strong build that can do most content in the game. The build combines quite a bit of uniques to be viable and is uh, stacking strength and intelligence to scale the whole build both defense and damage so as you might figure out the ceiling of the build is quite high but you can start this build on quite a low investment and for this character i've been able to defeat all pinnacle bosses with ease with only around 10 divines invested the build can struggle a bit on resist at first, but as the build is using so many auras, getting a purity of element helps out a ton while starting out. For defense we have a decent energy pool from all the stat stacking, and we also get quite a bit of leech which helps out a ton to stay alive as the brand is always up dealing damage. There's uh, quite a bit to go over so let's just start from the beginning. And uh, the build is scaling its damage by using NG Blade and this will transform your equipped weapon to a NG Blade providing flat lightning damage equal to a percentage of our energy shield. And the stat from our weapons are using is going to be replaced by the NG Blade but the sockets are going to stay. So here we want to grab one 100 weapon with a abyssal socket in it to get more stats from that. By being the Inquisitor we get access to Battle Mage from the Instrument of Virtue which will add spell damage equal to the damage of our main hand. And to top it off even more we're using Spellblade support as well on our main link to give us even more flat spell damage equal to 135% of damage of our equipped weapon which is the Energy Blade. It get pretty insane as they stack on each other. I'm currently got around 4.5k on the max lightning damage here on my blade with a tooltip of over 600k and you can get upward double of this with a bit of investment. So this is where we get our main source of damage from and you can basically use any skill with this uh, with this setup but here we are using the new storm brand of indecision which is a perfect fit for this build. Brands are a really nice skill as you can play fairly safe with it, dealing damage off screen and also around corners. And with this new version we get 85% damage effectiveness with the skill which is huge boost to damage as normal one only give us 30% effectiveness of added damage. And as mentioned earlier the build stacks strength and intelligence to scale both defense and damage. For damage the main reason is going to be Righteous Providence which will give us 1% critical strike chance per strength or intelligence whatever is lowest. So for example if you get 1000 of both stats you will get equal to that in critical strike chance which is crazy good. And this also works really good for the Shapel Touch Gloves as they give us global percentage energy shield per 10 strength and energy shield is also equal damage from the energy blade. We are also using Rapid Glow to boost the damage even further as we get tons of life from all the strength stacking and here we get even more crit chance for spells but also increase spell damage per 100 of our maximum health but with a drawback as it sacrifices 10% of our life when we are using a spell skill. However we don't have to worry about that as we have all of our life reserved and that's cause of our next item on the list which is going to be the Ivory Tower Body Armor. And what this does is that we get 30 flat energy shield per 100 reserved life. So we get tons of added energy shield from this which will scale great with our gloves and intelligence stacking. To keep ourselves alive even though we have tons of energy shield from the build we still have to fix chaos damage as it will pass by it. Coruscating Flask is the item that will fix this on this build and this makes it so chaos damage taken does not bypass energy shield during effect. And this we need to have up all the time to fix that and uh, combine this with a timeless jewel with Balbala and this gives us a traitor keystone which provides 4 floss charges per empty floss slot and that's why we only have 3 on this character. It's going to be enough to have 100% uptime on the flask. And this means that you can't run any floss mods on map so do keep that in mind as you will most likely die if it's not up. And that's basically the most important parts of the build, but let's continue going over all the rest of the items. 
Crown of the Inward Eye is a great match for us with increased max life, mana and global energy shield up to 21% and we also get the Transfiguration of Soul which makes it so increase and reductions to maximum energy shield also apply to spell damage at 30% of their value. Psychopleurian Coil with its percent increase to all attributes and this is going to be boosted even further with Intrinsic Catalyst and here we also get Ignite Immunity by having Strength higher than Dexterity. For Rings you want to get as much Strength and Intelligence as you can which can be easily crafted by simply Essence Crafting on a Fractured Item. And for the Crown Jewel of them all is going to be the Amulet and this is probably going to be the most annoying thing to get for this build. Here you want a 3 wrapped talisman as a bright percentage to all attributes. If you want to craft this yourself, going for a fractured base and then essence craft as mentioned before with as much strength as you can get. You then need to go and start doing your betrayals and this is from having Georgian at tier 3 in the research area and this will grant you the crafting station which will change your amulet to a talisman and it's going to be a 1 in 9 chance to hit the 3 rat talisman. Astromentis is a great budget option to start with though uh, with a huge boost to all attributes. Let's go over quickly the stats that you want to focus on starting with strength, intelligence, all attributes, life, energy shield, resist for the cap, cost speed, critical strike multiplier, spell, lightning or area damage. And here we are a quick preview of the passive skill tree. For more information I do recommend going to the POB and check out for yourself and this will be in the description. But let's just go over the main keystones that we have here. First, starting with blood magic, removes all mana, we get more maximum life and skill now cost life instead of mana. And this will also make it so we can reserve all of our auras as life and by doing so we get more damage from the red pit globe and also defense from our chest piece. Unlevering stance make it so we are now stun immune. Iron will make it so strength damage bonus applies now to spell damage great as we are stacking strength. Eternal youth make it so energy shield recharge instead applies to life and as we are using blood magic all skill costs life. And think of this as a way to have permanent uptime of life regen so we can just spam our skills. Rune Binder makes so we can have two brands on the same enemy. Seal of Oath makes so all life regen is now applied to energy shield instead. The Traitor makes Flask gain 4 charges per empty Flask slot every 5 seconds. And that's from using the Brutal Restraint Timeless Jewel with Bal Bal on it. And lastly, Pain Attunement. 30% more spell damage when we are on low life. And for the Ascendancy we went with the Inquisitor. The first one is going to be Righteous Providence. This gives us critical strike chance per point of either strength or intelligence depending on which is lowest. Inevitable Judgment makes it so crits ignore enemy elemental resist. Really strong as we crit all the time and we don't have to worry about getting penetration on the build. Instrument of Virtue is for the Battle Mage, which gives us flat spell damage from our NG Blade. And lastly, Sanctuary will create Cronscary Ground whenever we stand still and also apply 15% increased damage taken to enemies standing in it. And for the new Affliction Ascendancy, we went with the Primalist to get access to all the charms. For the budget version, you can go with Strength and Intelligence with the Damage Leech as Energy Shield. And uh, I also went with a Lupin charm here to gain frenzy charges on hit, huge damage boost overall for the build and also bleed removal when we use a flask. For a high budget version you can also get percentage strength with flat strength and int for some really serious stat tracking. Next let's take a look on our jewels here. On the normal ones you want to go for life, resist, energy shield or strength and int. And a big note here is that you will need one of these with the increased reservation of efficacy of skills as implicit to be able to fit in one additional aura as well. Keep that in mind. As mentioned earlier we're using a timeless jewel here with Bal Bala uh, to get the traitor keystone for the flash chargers. And here the easiest way to check the right numbers right is going to be to use the find timeless jewel here uh, in the POB. Change all of these to the brutal restraint and Balbala. And here you can then look for whatever you want. 
such as elemental damage. Uh, you can go for flask effect. You can go for life. Onslaught. Movement speed. You name it. Generate. Search. And here are all the numbers that you will benefit from. That which was taken is my new favorite item in the Affliction League. And basically what it does is that it's randomized all different mods that can be applied on charms, giving us two prefix and two suffixes. And uh, these can go really crazy and it all comes down to your budget. The main mod that you are looking for here is going to be the Strength and Intelligence mod. And if you are planning on using Arcan Surge in your links, you will also need to have it proc through this with the mod Gain Arcan Surge when you or your totem hit the enemy with a spell. You can also get this mod on one of your normal charms as well for even more budget version. Or you could even go through a Watcher's Eye, which makes it so when you create a Consecrated Ground while affected by Sealotry, you will gain Arcan Surge. And this is needed because we don't use any mana on this build. And to trigger the support, normally you will have to spend X amount of mana for it to trigger. You can also get mods like Percent Strength here as well, or even Frenzy Charges on hit, but then we are talking about some serious money. And for the links, let's start with Stormbrand of Indecision. Here you want to go for increased critical damage, Arcan Surge, Spellblade, Swift Brand, and also Conk Effect. I also put Cruelty here, and that's because of the base of the body is going to be armor and ES, and it's not really easy to get all six of these blue, as it's more common to get five blue and one red. We're using NG Blade with Enhance, and also with Assassin's Mark, and that's going to be in the shield, which we also have plus one to socketed skills. Using Shield Charge with faster attacks, we're also having Molten Shell and Flame Dash. We have a simple Cosmic Damage taken with Immortal Call. Using Defiance Banner, Vitality. Using Sealotry, Discipline and Determination with a Enlightenment, and that's level 3. And Evolve Haze with Eternal Blessing, just for a free aura. And do keep in mind we are using Vitality here just to mid-max our life reserve. And this number here will be different for each player. Just try to get as low as you can to reserve as much life as possible. And for the Floss, as mentioned earlier, we are using the Coruscating Elixir to make us not instantly die from Chaos Damage. And you want to add a Enchant to reuse this at the end of the Floss effect to make a automated loop. We're also using a normal Bismuth Flask with some additional elemental resist with reduced charges and same enchant as before. This really helps out with our resist problems. Lastly, using a Quicksilver for some extra movement speed and as we have 100% crit chance, having the chance to gain flash charges on crit on this is really helpful. And for the suffix, you can go with a couple options here. I went for cost speed as it scales really nice with the brand skill. Movement speed is another option here, and also even reduced effect of curses works as well. For Pantheons, we are using the Soul of the Brian King, so we cannot get stun locked, and also get freeze immunity here with some reduced effect on the shield as well. And for the minor one is the Soul of Jadgul for 50% reduction reflected damage and 30% reduced effect on curses on you. And just going over some immunities of the build. As just mentioned, we get Freeze immunity from the Pantheon, we get Ignite immunity from our belt, and you can even get Shock immunity from the belt if you manage to get your Intelligence higher than Strength. This is doable as a mid-budget version, but as you invest more into the build, you will have more Strength than Int, so it's not possible at a higher budget. For Poison and Bleed, the build doesn't really need it as we do have so much Leech, uh, we get bleed removal from one of our charms when we use a flask. But if you want, you can use the protection wheel right above the shadow starting point. Combine this with a poison and bleed abyss jewel. And you can also get corrupted blood immunity from the monster itself if you don't have it on one of our jewels. Alright, so there we have the NG Blade Storm Brand Inquisitor in Path of Exile. I hope I didn't miss out on anything, as there were quite a bit to go over and still trying to not get the video being too long. 
If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me as well in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!